Welcome back to Cybos TV. Now, we're going to be talking about the global payments industry, its resilience and its impressive growth forecast for this year. A forecast that came from the Boston Consulting Group's leading examination into the payments industry in its 20th annual global payments report for 2022, the new growth game, was published a week ago. BCG found that despite macroeconomic headwinds, global payments revenues are likely to rise year on year by around 9% for 2021, 2022 in fact, and also ride a positive trajectory into the next decade. In other words, they're expecting to reach $3.3 trillion by 2031. Eye spinning, isn't it? I'm delighted to welcome two co-authors of BCG's Global Payments Report, Tiesha Kremers, who's the Managing Director and Partner at BCG, and Alvaro Vaca, who's also a Managing Director and Partner at BCG. Gentlemen, it's very good to see you. Are you guys Cybos veterans or is this your first visit? It's my first visit in person. Welcome. Oh, it's, a, it's a few times uh, now. Thank what, what's a few times? 10, 15? Uh, it start, <laughs> well, it started actually 10 years ago in, in Osaka, yeah. Okay, so that's about quite some time. Yes, it's quite some time. That's interesting because we've had quite a few veterans here. So we're trying to see who's been here the most. We've had a gentleman who's been going to Cybos for 20 years. So you're catching up slowly. But look, it's good to see you. Alvaro, let me start first with you because I want to focus on this recent analysis. Okay, two questions in one. Let's start with the first of these. How do you see the global payments industry landscape evolving? Well, as you just said, it's a high growth um, game. It's a game because it's, very, it's becoming very competitive. Um, so you need to define what is your playbook and differentiate from, uh, from other competitors. Um, so it's the combination of, as you said, growth, but also um, a, a different play that uh, you need to choose uh, between uh, retail, wholesale, global, local. We will discuss that in a, in a minute. But I think that that, that is the, the, the title of, of, our, of our report, you know? Sure. It's that growth uh, jointly with the game. Mm. But it's happening against a very unstable macroeconomic background. So yeah. how has it been able to evolve? Because the well, theory would go that what's happening at a macroeconomic level yeah. is going to impact. But I think we don't need to forget that we have other macro trends that are uh, pushing uh, the payments growth. We have cash to non-cash. Uh, migration, so cash is disappearing everywhere, and we also have e-commerce. So digital e-commerce is driving phenomenal growth in payments. Those two, I think, are a long-term uh, trend that are going to uh, fuel the growth of payments independently of the macroeconomics every year. Mm. So we can actually expect good payments going forward in the next five to ten years from your yeah. predictions. We expect good revenues. Uh, I think it's a combination of very good volumes coming from especially cash, financial inclusion, as well as uh, digital use of, uh, of, the, of the payment methods. But also I think it's a challenge of unitary revenue. So the profitability is going to be challenged. And that's the game part of the growth. Mm. We need to find how to play that part. Sure. And Tej, but what, what, what has come out when you look at this industry is uh, that it's very dynamic and extremely innovative. It's certainly something which always comes out at Cybos and, and the, 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 the line is, is getting higher each year. So what are the major global trends in terms of that? Where is the innovation the most dynamic? Yeah, I think, I think uh, as per your for, for, for former question, what we see is there's definite risks uh, in the industry. Obviously, sort of higher interest, higher inflation also leads to sort of risk uh, on the payments, on exposures that uh, that banks and our pa payment pr participants take. At the same time, there are real opportunities because you obviously also now see sort of new corridors for international payments appearing. Uh, there are many opportunities related to sort of the digitization of, of cash and, and that coming into the the, the, the payments volumes, uh, but also the opportunity to leverage AI to drive further growth. So I think with that, uh, as Alvaro says, it, what is really important is to pick the plays and to selectively look for those growth pockets and, and be able to fast track your growth as a participant uh, and, and thereby also become more resilient against some of the risks that those higher exposures take, right? Mm. Because if I take the example of AI, 
obviously that enables me to do more valuable business with my clients, but it also helps me to understand where the risks are from a credit perspective. Mm. Uh, so leveraging sort of the, the, the trends and really driving that innovation is also a ticket to growth. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's an interesting point that you raised there because I guess the question has to be how can companies actually grow in this climate? But the payment sector is innovating, so the message appears to be, look, companies have to innovate as well to make themselves resilient against what is happening. And then, of course, it brings together this compatibility. Uh, exactly. And what is fundamental and, and why, why payments has been enjoying so much growth, but also so, so high valuations, is, is because the access to data is so important for many sort of other products that banks or uh, fintechs or other participants uh, supply. So being able to be at that for forefront of leading sort of on AI is, is really what we see throughout, uh, whether it's for a retail bank, a wholesale bank, a, a network or a fintech, it is a key to, uh, to, to see growth. Mm. And, and Alvaro, let's, look at, let's take a look now at retail payments, in fact, and the merchant acquirers. What are some of the challenges that these particular players are facing mm -hmm. and how do you see them conquering that? Well, that's, that's the trick. Um, I think we should never forget that payments is a global business mm. with local implementation. Yes. So that global local play is a challenge. Um, so we see global champions growing uh, everywhere, but they don't have the capability of uh, basically do the localization of the services. So you have also room for local players that are very uh, linked to the needs of the customers in those countries. Let, let's take uh, PIX in Brazil, let's take Cody in uh, Mexico, let's take Bizun in Spain. So you have alternative payment methods which are driving the local economy and uh, you need to adapt to those. So I think, again, that's, that's, that's the challenge. In terms of innovation, this is all about customer. None of us want to pay. I just want to buy something. Mm. Uh, payment has to be seamless. I think we are evolving uh, in that pace. Now the next step is potentially embedded finance. So yeah. banks that are listening to us, be aware uh, that payment players will be a nice competitor coming mm. into, into play in the next years. Yeah, I mean, again, another prediction that you've made in the report, and let's stay with that, because you also talk about CBDCs actually yeah. gaining momentum. We were talking about CBDCs yesterday here on Cybos, in fact. But tell me more about that landscape from your mm -hmm. vantage point. How is it changing? What is it we need to be aware of going okay. forward? We were discussing before this interview about shiny objects in payments. CBDC might end up being a shiny object or something really useful. Um, it's um, up to some regulators uh, to do the right things. Um, we now see over 90 uh, plus um, central banks have doing some kind of experiment with CBDCs. The key is how those CBDCs will change how do we pay. Um, if it's basically similar to debit card or account to account, why do we need CBDC? And I think there are a lot of politics and sovereignty um, questions around CBDCs. Uh, my main question to them is, what is the final customer going to get out of CBDC? Put uh, the customer at the heart of it, in other words. When I say customer, it's merchants, it's individuals, sure. even other stakeholders. Um, and we need to think about that. What mm. are we providing with this new uh, to the payment systems through CBDCs? And I think the technology is there. Uh, we, can, we can implement some yeah. new features, but it has to be run, grounded on, right. on customer needs. But it has to, so it has to be a, there has to be a purpose to it, effectively. Yes. Yeah. Right. I mean, if you don't have the purpose, you won't have the adoption. And in payments, everything is about adoption. Um, right. And we, we have, for example, in Europe, some past experiences with open banking and PSD2. Mm. This was regulator-led, and we've seen where we landed. So I hope we, we, don't, we don't do a similar um, exercise. Mm, with CBDCs, with CBDC. yeah. Let's see. Yeah, otherwise it just becomes a gratuitous experiment, basically, and what is there to show for it at the end. But, Tish, you know, we looked at the new reality in the payment zone, but how, how is this going to play out in wholesale systems? And effectively, what does this mean for the role that banks themselves are going to be playing in a system, an ecosystem, which is constantly evolving? Yes. Well, I, th I think piggybacking on, on what Alvaro just said about p putting the customer central is I think what's really important for uh, banks is to sort of continuously 
focus on the role of the treasurer and the experience and the environment that the treasurer operates on, in. And how do you make their life easier in, in terms of, sort of on the one hand, uh, sort of doing payments, executing payments, what is going wrong, what is, uh, is stagnating, what's not uh, uh, going through sort of the, uh, the operational process. Um, but also sort of thinking about m much more using AI tools to help them plan and, and schedule payments and, and optimize uh, sort of liquidity positions across accounts, uh, scheduling payments. And, and there are many opportunities obviously with sort of the, uh, the and continuously enlarging sort of AI machine learning and data capabilities that you have to, to drive that. And in that way, banks can really sort of uh, uh, create deeper relations with uh, with corporate treasurers and, and their clients rather than seeing it as disintermediation mm. because of sort of a, a pay to procure platform that comes into play. And so thinking about what really delivers value for uh, for your corporate clients is is a very important unlock. Absolutely, a good note on which to end. But look, gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me here on Cybos TV. I'm sure that we'll catch up again with you yeah. next year. Very <laughs> happy to. Absolutely, in Toronto. You'll probably have written another report as well that we can get our teeth into. We hope so. Fantastic. But look, thank you so much for joining us. Chishba Kremers, who's the Managing Director and Partner at BCG. And also Alvaro Vaca, also the Managing Director and Partner at BCG as well. Thank you for joining us and happy Cybos.